YouTube, uh, in this section, let's talk about JDBC. Let's use a Derby Java database to demonstrate how to use um, um, how to connect to interface around some SQL commands. Are we going to copy this code to Eclipse instead of um, typing it? Okay, let's go to Eclipse, create a new Java project. Let's take a look at this program. Yeah. Uh, here we imported Java SQL. In this package, there are four important interfaces, driver, and a connection, and a statement, and a result set. Those are four important JDBC interfaces. In order to use them, we need uh, concrete classes implements those interfaces. And those concrete classes are provided by JDBC drivers. Different uh, vendor have different, uh, provides different uh, JDBC drivers. And um, <coughs> the driver manager is a factory class. We call the get connection method with parameter UIR in order to create an instance of the of the class which implements connection interface. And uh, the UIR has its own structure. JDBC is a protocol. Derby is a database type. And uh, it could be MySQL. Post query, uh, it, and it could have uh, be Oracle, and uh, other kinds of uh, uh, database vendors. They need to provide uh, their concrete class, which implements the driver connection statement and the result set. This one is a schema, which is a database name, and uh, this flag means if there is no such database called a social, you just create one. By using this uh, URL, Travel Manager is able to create an instance of the implementing class only if the class is in the class path. Okay, so. Um, that means we have to add the, add the implementing classes in the class path. Taking the Derby for example, their implementing classes are packaged inside a jar file. We need to download it from the website and uh, unzip it, put it uh, for example under the downloads, then we add this uh, derby jar to our class pass together with the current directory which is our derby db java located and um, this is how you compile it with a command line this is how you run it with a command line and um, in this section I will show you how to add it to the Eclipse uh, class pass Uh, so far, I haven't added anything. So, if you check the properties, Java build pass, okay, the libraries, yeah, we only have the GRE, we don't have Derby jar in the class pass. As a result, if you try to run this program, you get an exception. Run as Java application, you see. When the driver manager try to create an instance of the concrete class that implements the connection, it uh, couldn't find a suitable driver class. Okay, so we need to provide that driver class. 
Uh, let's go to download it. And the easier, the easier way is we just to search for uh, Derby database, Derby DB, which is a Apache project. And uh, here is a website, and we have the downloads. It is official, and we download it. Okay, let's connect this. Start a download. I previously downloaded it, but uh, this time let me show you how to import it into Eclipse. And uh, now we have it. Let's open and uh, check the contents. And uh, under the nib folder, we have the Derby jar. This jar is what we need. We need to include it into the cast pass. So let's go back to the Eclipse demo. Go to Eclipse and uh, properties. Yeah, Java class pass libraries and internal jars. Uh, this from beginning downloads and here is a bin library Derby jar. Okay, open. Now we have the Derby jar in our class pass. We click OK. This time, if we run the program again, it. Um, Okay, success. We see some printout. Let's read the program, see how it works. Uh, here in the main, it's a SQL exception because um, uh, calling uh, using the Java SQL uh, packages at through SQL exception. So like get a connection, create statement, and uh, execute update, those throw SQL exceptions. So you, you need to throw it. And uh, here is a try with resources. We first uh, call the get connection method of the factory class driver manager. We provide the URL since the uh, uh, driver JDBC driver concrete class is in our class pass. We get an instance of the driver, an instance of the class implementing connection, and we assign it to connection interface. Uh, through the connection, we get a statement. Uh, it's a concrete class, and uh, we assign it to the statement interface. This is a try with resources because if there's uh, any exception, the statement and uh, connection will be closed. Of course, just uh, closing those uh, resources will throw SQL exception. That's why we have the SQL exception. And um, inside the method body. Once we get a statement, we can execute queries. There are, uh, so the, for OCPJP, we need to know three types of way of uh, calling SQL statements. <clears throat> if you have DDL, like a create a table, drop table, uh, no, like, like yeah, you, you, if you have a, a DDR um, statement, a create table, drop table, modify table, you need to uh, call execute update. Um, OCPJP won't uh, test the create and drop table, but uh, if you, uh, they will test the executing of uh, insert update and uh, delete table. Init rows, uh, sorry, it's an insert update and init rows from a table. So in that case, you can call execute update for insert update and delete rows from a table. And uh, it returns an integer indicating how many rows are affected. And uh, let's take a look at the result. So the first time, uh, zero rows are affected. P 
because we are creating table, next time we, we insert a row. So one row is affected. Next time we insert another row, so we get another one print out. This is what, what happens here. Create a table, zero row. Uh, insert a row, we get a one. Insert another row, we get a, another one. Uh, next, if we are executing uh, SQL select a statement. We use execute query. Execute query return result set. We can iterate through the result set and print out the contents of a table uh, of a table columns. Okay, so here we select uh, everything. Since we have four columns. This query returns uh, the contents of the four columns. The first column name is a string. So in order to get the contents, we call get a string. And um, we specify which column uh, by uh, using its index. The index starts from one instead of zero. So Result set get string one return us the name. The next column age is an integer. So we call get int and we supply the index of the column which is two. Alternatively, we can specify which column is used by specify its uh, column name. Here we can specify age. And um, the third column is a string again. Instead of uh, using this syntax, we call get an object and we cast the result to string. The fourth one is a, a string again and uh, we get it using get string. So uh, let me run it. Okay, that's what we saw. We have two rows and they are print out. Okay, let's take a look at those contents. Um, is a, so after here, we have a, a blank line print out. Then we insert another row. Then we select the table. And um, let's take a look at this SQL. And this time we use a different syntax. Uh, previously we used uh, execute query to execute select statements. We also used uh, execute update to execute uh, insert, delete, and uh, update statements. This time, the execute is a general purpose syntax which can execute uh, all the statements above. It can execute, select, insert, update, and delete. However, the return type is different. Um, instead of a returning uh, integer, which is a case of executive update, or returning a result set, which is a case of executive query, it returns a boolean. This boolean indicates what kinds of uh, query you just executed. If you executed a select statement, the is result set is true. So in that case, you can call get result set and uh, in order to get a result set, okay, and uh, it iterates through as you did for execute query. If the execute returns false, that means you just encountered a statement which is uh, update, insert, or delete. And uh, in that case, 
you core get update account. And in order to get an integer, which is a update account, like you did for the executor update. Okay. So the first uh, SQL method, um, we are we execute an insert, so the is result set is false. We get in this block, and uh, the get update count return one, and we print it out. So here you see one. The next uh, SQL, we executed a select statement, so execute returns true. And we are in this block. Uh, we get a result set and uh, we iterate through. And uh, since there are three rows, we have them print out one, two, three. Okay. This is how this program is. Is uh, is how the program works. A statement executor update. It's just. Uh, drop the table after, after we finish using it. Uh, the last but not the least, it's a good habit to close the resource once you finish uh, once you finish uh, using them. Here we close the resource set by call the resource set close. This is a, a good habit but uh, not uh, strictly necessary because in the try with resources block, uh, when you close a statement, it also closes the cor corresponding result set. Uh, again, when you close a connection, it also closes the corresponding statement. So technically speaking, we can move this statement inside the try with the resources body and the program function the same. Uh, however, explicitly closing resources is considered a good habit and uh, you reclaim the resources earlier. And uh, of course you can use other kind of um, database uh, JDBC driver like MySQL, like Oracle. Uh, the syntax is the same. You put a URL and um, you include the, uh, the driver jar in your class pass, uh, MySQL. Uh, database package they're implementing classes inside their own jar right? or like MySQL jar and Oracle also have its own jar which uh, packaging its concrete classes inside a jar. Those concrete classes implement the um, driver connection statement uh, resource set. <coughs> so just by switching the jar file, you are able to connect to different kinds of databases. We will re uh, revisit this program later when we uh, start in the uh, Java Stream API. So that's the uh, content of this section. <laughs>